Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders Reptile Advice. Today's question comes from Sam True. It was only posted this morning on one of the stress videos, but it was such a good question. I thought I'm going to answer that and jump on it straight away. I just got a common boa about a week ago. She had been kept in a tank without any hides for a while. I gave her two hides, one at the warm end, one at the cool, and she's been spending most of her time in the hides. I know she's still getting used to the new tank, but she will spend days at a time in the same hide. Seems like she's not even thermoregulating. Is this okay? I've been trying to keep handling to a minimum. I also blocked off three sides of the glass tank to make her feel more secure. I have a thermostat with temperatures seemingly correct. I am just surprised she's not moving from one side to the other seems like the only thing that will get her out of the hide is when I check on her and then she'll go back into whichever one is closer. So Sam, thanks for the question. It's a great question. Uh, I think it probably raises a lot of similar questions for um, new keepers of new animals um, and trying to maybe second guess our animals' behaviours. So what we can pretty much safely assume in the first two weeks of an animal settling in, we may well notice some erroneous behavior to how we would expect them to behave normally, and this is due to stress. It was the, the comment was placed on the environmental stress video, and it stands to reason that if we introduce a new animal to an alien environment, that it may well exhibit certain behaviors that would not be the norm. These could be, um, hiding away and completely shutting down these could be outward aggression and antagonistic behaviors through stress or feeling you know a bit exposed we've got an animal that potentially was exposed already you, you're talking about the fact that she was kept for a while without any hides which is a, a very strange state of affairs what this doesn't tell me is how old the boa constrictor is as they get bigger it's harder to find hides for bigger boa constrictors so if it's a mature animal i can maybe half see it because it's it's hard to find that sort of stuff um, whereas if it's a baby I can't think of an excuse why it wouldn't be afforded the opportunity to hide away and you've done quite right by allowing it to do so so I think maybe let's talk about um, chemical markers an animal first going into a new tank when an alien uh, environment is encountered and, and, and the snake arrives there is nothing to suggest that this is home and this in, in and of itself is a cause of stress so it's very very common for uh, snakes and lizards to defecate and um, pass urates to mark a territory and they will use this as a point of reference they'll come and go from it um, and it, usually the first 24 hours they'll roam incessantly but then they go to ground and they'll hide away a lot so what you're talking about actually as far as exhibited behavior goes is completely normal and my initial gut instinct is to tell you not to worry or necessarily to overthink it but there are a couple of things that I want to go over with your kit chief amongst which is it's a glass tank which means that it's not a brilliant insulator and there, there, there are issues with glass tanks that we probably need to discuss. If we are trying to keep one end the 30, 31 degrees Celsius that we would need for a boa constrictor and we need a relatively steady gradient to the cool side that may be 26 degrees we need something that's going to insulate the heat from the warm end and allow it to taper off at a steady rate towards the cool end. Glass may not allow you to do that. What glass may do is just dissipate the heat very, very quickly. Couple with that the fact that manufacturers insist on putting complete mesh lids on these glass tanks and any heat that we put into those tanks will just piss straight out the top. So as far as efficiency goes, they're the single most inefficient design of enclosure. If your tank is designed differently to this, by all means, comment and get back to me, let me know. But I'm trying to think on my feet about the kind of kit that you may have. And if it's a Zoomed or Komodo or Exoterra, they have mesh lids. And they're a nightmare to heat for that reason. And what they lend themselves to brilliantly is... Um, even gradients, so we'll talk about truly equatorial, the dendrobates, the tree frogs will usually heat from above, which means covering half the lid, which means arresting half of the airflow, which then helps improve insulation. So you can see where I'm going here. If you've got a young boa constrictor and you've got it on a heat pad, for example, 
there's a very good reason that it's potentially spending all of its time at the warm side because the cold end's too cool. You're only heating one side and you're only heating one side surface. The only place where the air is commensurate to the biome that the animal originates from is within its hide, where that will insulate some of the heat given off by the pad and therefore it's more comfy. If you're doing it with a bulb, it could well be that the gradient is just falling off too sharply once you leave that 80 degree radiation of spotlight or if it's a smaller bulb 63 degrees radiation of light and then at which point you know we've, we've got this we should have a gradient like this and what we end the, actually end up with is it going like that where as soon as it leaves the heated area woof out this just goes away so the animal will choose not to go down there so one i'm not a huge fan of uh, heat pads in vivs for boids so boas or pythons they like warm air and they like to breathe warm air the temperate colubrids can tolerate belly heat and breathing cool air and it doesn't seem to have any sort of uh, deleterious effects to them doesn't give them ris or anything like that but the boas and pythons will and if it's a young boa maybe not now but as it grows and the effect uh, the efficacy of the heat pad reduces because the mass of the boa increases then you may well see issues or you could see constipation because they're sat with their belly directly on the heat um, you've got a thermostat which is great I would expect no less anybody who watches this channel if you're not using a thermostat I'm gonna uh, tell you off so nice one but I would maybe look at heat source I would look at material if you do not have the funds to change your tank you need to look at the way that the ventilation works in the vivarium and i would consider maybe cutting some perspex or glass and covering certain sections of the lid to arrest elements of airflow which then will increase the um the the temperate air temperature within the viv because it doesn't dissipate as quickly and it may help you to retain humidity for shedding skin and 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 so on um, but always leave a portion open at the hot side and a portion open at the cool side so that we can encourage convection and that circulation of air where the hot air gets exhausted and the cold air gets dragged in and pulled through and it will stop the air from stagnating so we don't want to stop airflow but maybe stifle it or guide it what we don't want is just to completely open the lid because that's going to cause us no end of problems we've got a hot hide and a cool hide mechanically yes that is the minimum that they need but sam you can go to town with this you have a snake that potentially is semi-arboreal so you can have some logs in there you can have some plants in there if we give it some sort of cognitive stimulus that will en encourage it to come out where maybe it can hide in plain sight amongst the foliage that we've put in and we give it the logs to climb up and enjoy maybe we'll get a bit more of these behaviors that you're maybe wanting to see and and be able to sit and appreciate your snake without necessarily getting it out because it's exploring its tank a lot of times it's not necessarily even physical hide sometimes it's just being able to put a a, a visual barrier that stops line of sight so it doesn't need to be a covered hide but those logs or um, plates of cork or however you want to arrange it just need to be able to sort of break up that even plateau of of cypress mulch or whatever it is you've used and break it up and make it seem a bit more inviting i'm not as exposed this isn't a plains or prairie species this is colombian rainforest um so we need to try and think about that and have a viv that reflects the biome which your boa originates from um so people will maybe let's let's think about how how they potentially argue i always have to think about how people are going to pull me down it, with i mentioned heat pads and not being a fan of heat pads with boids and the counter to that obviously is everybody's going to talk about racking systems and really useful boxes and all the rest of it and we've already answered that the airflow is incredibly arrested in those sorts of boxes which means that when you heat it with a pad the air stays warmer for longer and the gradient is more gentle as a result if you tried heating your rub with the lid off would it work as well well no it'd be useless but how is a basically a glass aquarium with a solid mesh lid any different it's not is it 
you've got to think about it like that sort of way um and if unless we arrest the airflow for that tank in some way to try and slow down air exchange we won't keep the heat in it will just literally dissipate it will find the shortest and fastest route out of the tank which is straight up and there's nothing to hold it in or retain it so the glass tanks occasionally can lend themselves towards desert tanks where that actually replicates the biome of origin where we can have exceptionally high temperatures but then we must have an area where an animal can retire from that heat so in those sorts of situations they kind of lend themselves but inefficiency is the, the, the precursor of the desert biome because there's no cloud cover there's no tree cover and the heat just goes it just dissipates and that's why we get such a massive temperature fall off at night your animals from a rainforest where there is a thick dense canopy that one doesn't allow the ground to become superheated but also retains both humidity and air temperature throughout the night as well so there is an insulating property to the biome of origin of a boa constrictor so this kind of alludes back to what we were discussing the other day which was the nuance of biome and habitat as well as looking um, at the latitude on the earth where the animal came from and Colombia is almost equatorial so the bandwidth for your snake is relatively thin we need to think about maybe a gradient from 31 32 at one side down to uh, 26 at the cool side so we're only talking about a variance or bandwidth of about six or seven degrees Celsius which in a decent size enclosure is pretty shallow make that a glass tank with next to no insulating properties potentially with a mesh lid and we're, we're creating headaches for ourselves so maybe we need to look at that um, as far as behavior goes it's normal I wouldn't panic it's normal for them to hide away I think we've answered the thermoregulating if we look at airflow and the way that the, that, that works you should be fine there keeping handling to a minimum perfect your animal is settling in it has 40 years to become a pet it only has one chance at settling into this tank properly so let's make sure that we give it to them you you're doing the right thing you have a thermostat which is fabulous which which we want you to have um, keep your meal small when new animals arrive it can irritate the gut so if you feed them big meals it's it's quite possible that we're going to get regurgitations as an issue and also possibly even abstinence as being overfaced by by such a big meal so let's just keep the, the first few meals modest let it settle in and we can slowly build up um, also the temptation is with boas they will grow quick if you're given too much food but these have got slow metabolisms and many keepers recommend that we're only going to be feeding them as youngsters probably every 10 to 14 days and as adults maybe every 21 28 days so we really need to slow off obesity is a major problem with common boas i hope that was of use sam i hope that was of use to everybody else as well kid gloves when you've got got um new animals that have arrived but also we need to critique the enclosure we want to put them in we want to make sure that it is suitable for purpose that the 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 material of construction is suitable for the application so yeah there's humidity so the glass is great because it's not going to rot you put it in a wooden viv it's going to rot so that's another side to it ah, yeah so now we need to think about stuff yeah so certainly as the boa grows we know that the humidity is less of an issue but they might not shed properly or brilliantly as a baby if it's kept too dry but you know boas have been bred for a good few generations and humidity is less of an issue than probably it was when they first arrived or that it would be with their cousin the red tail which is invariably either still wild caught or only one or two generations removed from the wild whereas common boas are 15 20 generations at least removed from the wild so you know their tolerance for lower humidity levels is is better than the mechanical need for a temperature and a gradient that's within the confines of where we need it um so maybe look at airflow i think i think that's probably the way i don't necessarily think you need to bin the glass tank just maybe look at the way that the air exchange works and help the the, the tank seem more appealing to to investigate We'll be back soon with another video. Uh, we'll see you all soon from uh, me and Paul at Snakes and Adders. Peace.